Hey there everyone, my name is Sam and welcome back to Respect Your Elders. Now, I won't say that this has been a long time coming, but it kinda has. Today we're talking about Metal Gear Solid, if you haven't noticed, and ever since talking about Snake's Revenge, I have really needed to talk about this game. But to really realize what's so important about this game is to understand the ambition and the intentions of the developers, and more importantly, Hideo Kojima himself. And with The Phantom Pain releasing tomorrow, I can't see why I shouldn't talk about this game. I mean, it's the game that spawned the stealth genre series. Well, not spawned, but you get what I'm saying. So with that, there's a little history about this little masterpiece came to be. Starting off with the aftermath of Snake's Revenge, Kojima was inspired to create a proper sequel the very next day after hearing how Konami went along and created their own sequel. Four years after the release of Metal Gear 2, Hideo Kojima had planned for a third installment in the series simply titled Metal Gear 3. This game would have been on the 3DO, and even had concept art that was in the 3DO version of Police Knots. However, with the decline of the 3DO, development would be moved to Sony's PlayStation shortly after the release of Police Knots. Not only would the change of console influence how the game was made, but would also influence the mindset of the developers. It was quoted that the team's goal was to create the best PlayStation game ever. The team was so obsessed with this goal that they actually wanted to trick players into thinking that the world was real. They did this so much to the point that they thought that if this wasn't the case, the game didn't deserve to be made. The ambition to create the most realistic style possible was supported with the use of full motion video cutscenes and the use of real-life events being implemented into the game's plot, but more on that later. To go along with this ambition, Metal Gear 3 was renamed to Metal Gear Solid. The title not only refers to the main character, Solid Snake, but it was also intended to convey that the game was in full 3D, as if everything around you was solid, palpable, and real. Supposedly, there was a version that was planned for the Nintendo 64, but nothing came about it except for a brief article from GameSpot. This is most likely due to Nintendo 64's storage limitations. In comparison, PlayStation Discs could hold 750 megabytes as opposed to only 512. The only way that would be possible for the game to get on an N64 cartridge would be to make some serious downgrades. And if the team's goal wasn't clear, downgrading was not an option. Metal Gear Solid was first shown as a video at E3 in 1997, and was playable at the Tokyo Game Show of 1998, and would then be released the same year. Released in September in Japan and October of North America in 1998, Metal Gear Solid set out what it was designed to do, be one of the best games on the PlayStation. Now this is normally where I would delve into the game's story, but the thing is, is that Metal Gear Solid has an extremely complex narrative. So with that being the case, I'm going to try and do my best to set the stage. The game picks up after the events of Metal Gear 2, and to make sure that you're caught up with the plot, the game briefly summarizes both Metal Gear 1 and 2 in text form. And while this isn't the best way to portray the story so far, it still does a relatively good job at summarizing both games. I would recommend playing the games themselves, but if you really don't have the time, then just look up a brief synopsis. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Six years after the events of Metal Gear 2, a renegade special forces unit named Foxhound takes over a nuclear disposal site located in Alaska's Fox Archipelago. Foxhound takes hostages and starts making demands towards the Pentagon, asking for the remains of Big Boss. If the government does not reply, the terrorists claim that they will launch a nuclear missile. In response, Roy Campbell forces Solid Snake out of retirement for another seeking mission to assess the situation at Shadow Moses. Once inside the base, Snake is quickly introduced to conspiracy theories, the agents of Foxhound, an inexperienced soldier, and even a cyborg ninja? Yeah, Metal Gear Solid isn't without a few science fiction elements, but that's definitely part of the charm when it comes to this series. Eventually, it is revealed that another Metal Gear was being created at Shadow Moses, hence the terrorists taking over the base. Snake's ultimate goal is then to stop the terrorists and destroy Metal Gear Rex. Now, I've intentionally left out a ton of plot points, because that is the ultimate beauty of this game, the narrative. And the only thing that can rival the narrative of this game is the attention to detail in it, but more on that later. Now, I'll admit the controls aren't perfect, but that doesn't deter from the absolutely amazing gameplay mechanics. From start to finish, the game is constantly throwing new challenges and obstacles to overcome. For instance, at the very beginning of the game, you are barely equipped with any weapons or tools to infiltrate the base. Or a little later, if you run around in the snow, the guards will see footprints in the snow. Speaking of the guards, they're extremely intelligent. It's honestly some of the best AI programming that I've seen in any video game. 
Their line of sight is pretty good for the most part. They'll hear you if you step on anything loud, and they'll even check rooms that you've hidden in. If you're not careful, they'll even call in for backup to chase you down. And while the guards are impressive, there's still a whole lot more to talk about. As you play through the game, there will be more weapons, items, and obstacles for you to overcome as you sneak your way through the complex. The deeper you go into the base, the tougher it gets. But the game has its moments of brilliance when it comes to shaking things up. Whenever you start to get comfy, just be on your toes for what the game might throw at you. Trap doors, random soldiers, camera guns, hidden mines, and so much more. I think the real star of the show here is the actual way of playing the game. The stealth. You could say that Metal Gear is the grandfather of the stealth action game, and I'd be hard pressed not to argue that statement. Sneaking through the base completely undetected gives me the strangest sense of accomplishment. It just feels good. The game does a great job of putting you in the shoes of the legendary Solid Snake. It makes the player feel like they are the badass. And hey, that's what action games like these are all about, right? The game also punishes you for going in guns blazing, and most of the time it ends in your death. Man, no one could forget that game over screen. Metal Gear Solid was unlike any other game at the time. It was the most cinematic experience of any gaming console so far. Full voice acting, in-game cutscenes, the game just had a lot of flow to it. It never felt like the game came to a stuttering halt. If there was something that you couldn't figure out, the game would always drop a hint on you. To see the story progress was a huge inspiration for me for playing it the first time around. And while the codec calls can get pretty lengthy at times, it's still engaging enough to keep the player interested. Or at least it was enough for me. And even if they aren't enough, there's still plenty of cutscenes and supporting characters. Another thing that I'd like to take note of is how in-depth the game goes to convince you that this is indeed the real world. And what I mean by that is, the game takes attention to detail to a whole nother level compared to games at the time. And even today. Seriously, the full motion video cutscenes, the fourth wall breaking dialogue, and even the ideas and theories bring something new to the table that makes me question the world around me. And it's not the only time Hideo Kojima has made me think this way either. In Snatcher, Kojima told an excellent story of fighting against corruption and injustice in society, and to question authority. If you'd like to learn some more about Snatcher, just check out my review of it. What also makes the game compelling to no end is the characters themselves. And while you might be facepalming yourself right now, just listen for a second. While a normal plot mostly rounds out the protagonist, the love interest, and a few side characters, Metal Gear Solid hardly has any flat characters. Each character is more compelling than the last, and that's why the plot becomes so complicated. Each character has so much to explain that it's hard to keep track of it all. However, having so many rounded villains and sidekicks is definitely better than just having one. The graphics at the time were actually pretty impressive. However, time has not been kind to the PS1's graphics. Everything is relatively blocky and jaded, but you can still make out most things and what they're supposed to represent. And while the graphics aren't anything to write home about, the music definitely is. This game's music is amazing. I don't even need to explain that to you. Anyone who's heard the main theme of Metal Gear Solid knows what I'm talking about. I bet you already even know what the main theme is, even if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's just that good. Plus, I can't forget about all the wonderful voice acting performances and sound effects. It's almost surprising how much dialogue the developers were able to fit into two discs. And I can't just not talk about the Twin Snakes. Shortly after the release of Metal Gear Solid 2, the Twin Snakes was released for the Nintendo GameCube. And honestly, I love it. I know I'm in the minority on this, but the updated graphics and sound make for an exemplary Metal Gear experience. Yes, it has its flaws, but it's still a great remake. Now before I wrap things up, I'm just gonna gush a little bit. Remember the fight with Psycho Manus where you could read your memory card and make the controller rumble, and the only way to defeat him was to switch the controller port? Or how about looking on the back of the case to contact Merrill? Or how about the time when you have to rappel down the side of the communications tower while being shot at by a high D? Man, this game has some awesome moments. To wrap things up, Metal Gear Solid was not only one of the best games on the PlayStation, if not the best, but it was also the most important for the stealth game genre. And while yes, Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 helped, neither of them had the impact that Metal Gear Solid did. And all I really have left to say is thanks to Dale Kojima and my friend who showed me this series in the first place. Seriously. Now, I'm sure plenty of gamers will go on to, you know, experience this masterpiece of a game and I'm sure they'll do it for years to come because it's simply one of the most important games of all time. And I really hope the Phantom Pain lives up to the hype. And well, if you haven't thought about your ancestors lately, think again. <laughs>